Shalom and Udayo, this is Tehillim29 back again for another anime review and in this anime review I'm covering a series that is on Netflix which is called Mechadets and the story is done by Greg Pak and of course it has people who have also worked on putting this story together and I must admit I really enjoyed every episode of this of which came out in connection to this story now this series has 10 episodes and i'll be covering a little bit of what each episode covers before i move into the main overall rating and review of the series so moving into say the first three episodes in relation to the 10 episodes the first three episodes are called underdogs evolution and know your enemy and in these first three episodes we end up meeting the key cast of characters to which stanford U is one of them as this story is also an extension to uh greg pack's mech cadet U, and there's also the new mech cadet series and in this we are introduced to stanford we learn that he's basically a janitor's uh, son and we learn a little bit more about where he works including um, how this place also plays a big part in looking after the planet until the mechs or the mechas that turn or turn up at the ch at the planet to which only certain or a certain number of mech cadets are chosen for the role to become a mech cadet and of course, by some slight chance, Stanford U also becomes a mech cadet pilot, to which he names his mech buddy. And that sort of links to something in relation to his past, connecting to his father. And I really like that connection between him and his mech. Uh, the next, or the f second, is called Evolution and also Know Your Enemy which with this we end up meeting the the basically the captain of the troop and we end up meeting the other mechs in the series and also we join up with frank and maya and of course we end up getting olivia who ends up joining him too but we learn that when her mech comes in it's actually a part of a program but that's not until seen a to uh, about midway to later on in the series when we move into know your enemy they encounter a situation to which they must um take on some shards and of course some of the shark eggs have interned now the shards are the villain in this series and we learn that they have many ways of like trying to get through the barrier that is set on this particular earth in Mech Cadet. And once those eggs have sort of hatched, they definitely make a big mess of things. Moving into the next couple of chapters, we have For All Humanity, Ghosts and Veritas, uh, to which for all humanity it mentions uh captain tanaka Reddy's earth's defenses when suspicious objects appears in mars or but uh chilling of course we get a bit of a lockdown of sorts as to what happens on the planet and of course with some of these events it can also affect the facility to which the sky corps operates from and also sends out the mechs from Moving into the next chapter, we have Ghosts uh, Discouraged. Stanford U, um, U turns to his mum for support. And of course, we have the... We have the Robos, or the mechs, sidelined. Uh, Captain Tanaka and Maya are also looking for some Shargs, which, again, is the enemy in this story. 
and Veritas Eva uncovers a secret about the Hero Force, to which we learn that the Hero Force uses certain things from fights and um, basically deceased mechs that have come into the atmosphere and are basically used to create these new mechs for the Sky Force, uh, including the mech that is used for Olivia. Moving into episodes 7 to 9 and eventually 10, we have the titles of All for One, the Einstein Rosenbridge, which plays a big part in the barrier that is protecting Earth and also from the Shargs. Uh, it's basically like a scene that you might remember in in, in Spaceballs, <laughs> where it is like a huge shield protecting the Earth. But in this case, um, these shields are slightly different, to which you do see the slight difference in them, to which there's sort of like many parts that connect it together. And we learn a little bit about this particular bridge and how it works with the, not only with the characters, but also an opportunity comes across to which uh, Stanford you with some of his experience as being a janitor and that, and also fixing things up in the base, or in the Skycorp base, uh, is able to put some of his technical skills to use, to which others don't actually have. And I found that was really good and also rewarding in the story. As we move into the last couple of stories in this, or the last couple of chapters, we have Dark Matter, uh, to which, in this, we see the team go up against a big, huge shark. And, yes, there is a slight win, but also a slight loss. Jumping into the last episode, which is called Family, to which we have Tanaka and the Mech Cadets, who take on one of the Queen Sharks. And due to these events that are occurring and happening in this, uh, we do actually see the loss of one of the members. Uh, I won't give it away as to which member it is, but we do see that Captain Park, um, or not Com uh, Commander Park, is upset. Um, we also see that the other Mech Cadet members are upset, like uh, Frank and Maya and also Stanford, because of knowing this particular character is no longer around. Um, I'm not going to give it away for spoilers sake so I do recommend that you definitely check out this story and uh, one thing in the after thoughts in relation to this I want to see a second season I really enjoyed this first season and I really liked what they did with the animation um, some of the things that I could sort of point out with the animation is that sometimes with some of the voiceover it didn't quite work through in some instances, but it also worked well in other instances. Um, that is my only small criticism in relation to this series. So moving into the next key thing, and that is the overall rating. Um, starting off with the main characters, to which the main characters uh, practically become Stanford U, uh, Frank, Maya, and eventually Olivia. And for this, I would give a 8.5 out of 10. I actually enjoyed it, and I felt that this brought across the story really well from the graphic novel series into live-action animation. Moving into the supporting characters, to which would be like Captain Tanaka, um, also members of Stanford's family and friends. Um, Captain Tanaka's f um, friends as well as support group, they too were really well presented in the story. In fact, maybe even in some cases a little bit better presented in the animation and what they were presented in the graphic novel story. Uh, for that, I will give an 8 out of 10. Moving into the next thing, animation. I absolutely enjoyed the animation in this, to which I want to give an 8 out of 10. And yeah, I'd have to say, 
for a Western animation, sometimes I can be a little bit harsh on it, but there are times where it's actually well-deserved, and I thought for this it was actually well-deserved. Moving into last but not least, and that is the area of the story. So for this story, I want to give a 9.5 out of 10. I enjoyed uh, this particular story that much. Yeah, it does have fan service, but fan service in a way that it does actually honor the source material and where it comes from. I also enjoyed how it gave us flashbacks in relation to each of these characters. And I really felt like that really gave us a little bit more bread and butter, <laughs> maybe even a little bit more meat to the story as to uh, why these characters are doing this, including their motivations. Well, overall, let's keep this colourful and have yourself an awesome day. And I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I do. Um, if you've not seen this series, I highly recommend you check it out.